Thank goodness that one is over. Shout out to everybody who spent their Friday night watching that game. The Raptors get absolutely routed by the Miami Heat. It was not close. It was not pretty. Raptors lose 109 to 73. That's a good Miami Heat Summer League team. And as a result, the Heat are going to be in the top four. They will be a part of the Summer League semifinals. Meanwhile, the Raptors, one in three after that loss, they're going to have one more game. And you look at this one, it was not good at all. It was just a terrible display by the Toronto Raptors. It got off to a very rough start for them. I mean, they had nine first quarter turnovers. They shot, what, 11% from three in that first quarter, 17% overall. The Raptors, they went on to have 17 turnovers, shot it just 30.7%, 20 from the field, 28.2% from three. Miami's defense, they were just making life difficult for the Raptors. They were not giving an inch. They were suffocating. And the Raptors, they cannot get anything going on offense whatsoever. You thought, okay, you know, first quarter was ugly. They're going to figure this out eventually. But Miami, they just kept coming, man. They were relentless. They did not show any mercy. This was just a flat-out beating. I thought Miami was going to break the record, which they have, for the largest margin of victory, which I believe is 50. Miami had that against the Lakers. Their largest lead in this one, 42. The Toronto Raptors, they never let. This was just a one-sided affair. Now, before we talk about some of the takeaways for the Raptors, guys, I just got to say this. Kalel Ware, this dude can flat out ball. And it looks like the Miami Heat have the steal of the draft for the second straight year. I know it's summer league. You want to jump the conclusion, but that's my prediction. I think Kalal Ware is going to end up being a very, very good player for Miami in that developmental system. He got drafted number 15. And the reason why I bring him up is because he was my number one guy for the Raptors. And obviously where he was off the board, Raptors going with their selection at number 19. And that player is Jacoby Walter. Now, I know a lot of people were concerned about Jacoby Walter. He did come into this game in a shooting slump, was not shooting it well from the field or from three. But Jacoby Walter, he did quietly put together a nice performance in this one. I liked how he finished this game hitting his final two threes overall. Finished this game with 16 points, 5 of 11 from the field, 3 of 7 from deep. For those of you who are already giving up on Jacoby Walter, pump the brakes. I'm not worried about Jacoby Walter at all. Yes, he has struggled with his efficiency, but you can tell this guy, he's a competitor. He's made some nice plays out there, and it's just going to be a matter of him getting into a rhythm. He was deemed an elite scorer coming out of college. We know he can get in the zone and hit some of those shots. Like I said, he ended this, this game hitting his last two threes, so that's a positive for him. And I think Jacoby Walter, it's going to be... I think a similar thing to what we saw from Grady Dick a season ago. Obviously, Dick, he had his struggles in summer league. He did not get off to the best of starts to begin his NBA career. But then we saw Grady Dick make some significant strides in the second half of that season. I think Jacoby Walter is going to have the same type of projection. It's not going to be smooth sailing, but we are, I believe, going to see Jacoby Walter make some significant strides during the season. That leads you to think he can become a solid staple of this rotation. So I'm not worried about Jacoby Walter at all. Wanted to start with him. He ended up being one of the very few bright spots of the Raptors in the midst of this beatdown. Three of three from the line as well. Jacoby Walter, I think with more time, he's going to build on more confidence. We're going to see him be more of an offensive staple for the Raptors as the Raptors are banking on Walter to be that offensive punch. Brandon Carlson, I thought he was another Raptor who really, he had the effort. You got to give him a lot of credit. This thing was ugly. This thing got out of hand, but Carlson, he was still playing hard, finished this game with 12 points, three of seven from the field. He did have a couple block shots, two rebounds. So it was good to see that from him. And then uh, battle was, uh, the Raptors' third leading scorer. He had nine points, three of five from the field, three of four from deep. So he continues to shoot the ball well from three overall. I know he had an off game uh, with his shooting in his third game, but battle another bright spot in this one. Obviously, he's been rewarded with the Exhibit 10. The not so good. Obviously, this entire game was bad, and, and there was a lot of terrible play. I know it's summer league, but even by summer league standards, this was not 
a good effort at all by the Toronto Raptors. Miami just made light work of them. Ochai Abaji, I know I've been butchering his first name a ton. I apologize for that. Abaji, I mean, if there's somebody I am worried about, it's him. Because Abaji has not shown us anything. To put it simply, he has been flat out bad. And the reason why I'm not giving Abaji the same type of leash as some of these other young players is because Abaji, he ain't that young. He's been in the league. He's going to be entering his third season. He's 24 years old. No Grady Dick. You've been playing in the NBA against NBA caliber players. You should be standing out in this environment. You should be showing something. You've shown absolutely nothing. And it's very, very concerning because Abaji, 0 of 5 from the field, 0 of 3 from 3, had two turnovers, and he has not looked good at all. Offensively, you wanted to see him make some strides. And if he isn't able to do that in summer league, I don't know how the hell he's going to put it together and be an impactful rotation player because I'm starting again in the territory of I don't even think Abaji is going to be able to survive and be in a, a you know a capable, consistent rotation piece, especially if his offense does not come along at all. And when you see him on offense, he doesn't look comfortable. He doesn't look confident. Shots not falling. He's not getting up his shots as well. I mean, in a game like this, only putting up five shots. I know you're not shooting it well, but you want to get your shot attempts up, especially when there's no Grady Dick. You want to be featured in this offense. Despite not hitting the shots, he was able to get to the free throw line, which is good because if your shot's not falling, you want to be aggressive, get to the line, but he even missed two free throw attempts. So it's been very, very disappointing to say the least. Abaji, I expected him to be one of the Raptors' standout players in summer league. It's very rare that you see a player you know, play in his third summer league, especially at 24 years old. And because he's now going to be entering his third season, you see him continue to struggle, not show you any upside whatsoever offensively. It's tough to see Abaji being able to put it together and be a key piece on this Raptors team. I'm not giving up on him. I mean, it is summer league. It would be dumb to do that, but it is not promising. And let's go revisit the deal. You know, they trade the pick and they get back Abaji, who right now doesn't look like he's going to be a rotation player. And then Kelly Olenek, who's got a couple years left. He's obviously an aging player. He was never going to be a part of the Raptors' future plans, more so of a veteran presence for now and a transitional piece to the next young big man that, come, that comes in. And the Jazz, they ended up using that pick to draft Collier. So the Raptors essentially banked on the fact that, okay, we're going to trade that pick. We're getting the young piece back in Abaji. You're banking that Abaji can become better than whomever the Jazz went on to draft. Abaji, I had high hopes for him. I know a lot of Raptors fans were hoping that he could show you something that you can, you know, get behind him on and feel good about him going into the season. It's summer league. All is not lost. I get it. But based on what we've seen here, yeah, it, it's tough right now uh, if you're on the Abaji bandwagon. And, you know, hope, hopefully he can figure it out. Look, I'm rooting for the guy. And when you look at the Raptors rotation, he is slated in as being one of those bench pieces. Um, but if he continues to struggle and not generate offense at all, it's going to be tough for him to remain in that spot. Um, so, yeah, overall, I mean, this was a tough, tough game. And uh, the Raptors... Did not look good, and they will play one more time in Summer League, a chance to see more of the young guys in action. Hopefully they can finish up strong, and hopefully these rookies can close out their Summer League on a high note, and we can see more of Jacoby Walter shooting it well. You know, Chomchi having a big game, and uh, Mobo, unfortunately, again, he missed this game. He's been out in the last two now after suffering that injury in game number two, and uh, Dick as well. So, yeah, guys, let me know your thoughts to this game. Let me know your thoughts to some of my takeaways. Hit a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new. That's it for me. It's Luke signing off. Thanks so much for watching. I will catch you all again in the next one.